Culturegrams and Britannica are two apps that students and staff have access to via ClassLink. These apps are filled with a variety of high-quality multimedia. Both apps integrate with Google Classroom, making sharing resources and media with students seamless. I will demonstrate some of the features of Culturegrams and navigate you through the app, while Catherine will do the same for Britannica. While both Culturegrams and Britannica are accessible for students via ClassLink, it's important to note that students may need to open the app first before accessing a link via Google Classroom. Let me show you what error might occur. Here in the student view of Google Classroom, the student is going to click on the material and see a link to Culturegrams. If they click on this link first, directly from Google Classroom, they may encounter this error, subscriber area only. To avoid this error message, you want to encourage your students to start on ClassLink, open up the app either Culturegrams or Britannica, let the app load, and then go back to their Google Classroom. Now when they click on the link, it will open up Culturegrams without the error message. The students will then be able to see the content that you shared with them. You'll notice that there are four categories part of Culturegrams, the World Edition, Kids Edition, States Edition, and Provinces Edition. I will go over all four categories in this tutorial, starting with the World Edition. I suggest using the World Edition with middle school or high school age students. There are different ways to navigate Culturegrams. One way is to select a region or country by clicking on the map. Here I can click on the continent of Africa, be brought to a new map and see all the countries available, and then click on the specific country that I'm interested in information on. I also could use this drop down menu here to select a region or country, scrolling through the list. And finally, if I scroll further down on the page, I'll see clickable links with the names of continents or regions. Again, I can click on the name, continue scrolling, and narrow down my search. So here we're on the main page of the World Edition, looking at information all about Egypt. Starting in the center of the screen, this is where you're really going to get that general overview. There's some facts at the top, some maps that you can click on. One feature that I really like is this infographic. If you click on the infographic, it will enlarge and open in a new window. Perhaps you want to use the infographic in a large group setting to kick off your research with your students. You could also send this to your students so they could look at it individually. Continuing down this, again, main section of the page, you're going to see um, some clickable links. So here you could actually click this play button and listen to audio. You'll have some nice visuals like the flag additional reading information on the side. You could also print this out. And then some facts. So this table has a lot of just, again, general information about Egypt. Let's look at the left-hand side of the page. Here you're going to see categories like background, the people, customs and courtesies, and continuing on. But underneath each is a clickable link. So if I click here on history, it's going to bring me to a different page of the world edition specific to the history of Egypt. This is very text heavy and that's why I would suggest using the world edition with middle school or high school age students. At the very top of this page, you'll see the option to translate. So if I click on this translate, Drop down, I could translate this from English to Spanish. And what you'll notice is that the web page does not translate. It's just that history content that translates. So we still have our 
main language of English on the side, but the content, this history piece, has been translated. I'm going to go back to English and you'll notice that you can also have your students listen to this again because it's so text heavy perhaps this could be a support for your students if you hit the play button it will read them all of this history content now it is read by a computer it's very choppy it's not a natural speaking voice but it's still a good resource if I scroll all the way down on this history page, you're going to see the next button and the previous button. If I click next, it's going to bring me to the next section that was listed over here on that left hand side. So after history is going to be population. Again, if I use the next button, it's going to bring me to the population and then your students could continue to research. I'm gonna go back to the main page of Egypt. So I'll click here, it says return to Egypt home. Next, I wanna go over the right-hand side of the page. Starting here at the top, you'll see two new options. And these options allow your culture grams to interact with Google products, such as your Google Drive and your Google Classroom. The first option is to save to Google Drive. When I click on this link, You're going to see that this document, meaning all of the content that we went over in the middle section, as well as the left-hand side, is going to be saved as a document in my Google Drive. It actually creates a folder called ProQuest Culturegrams. And then again, this is saved as a document. So let's go to my Google Drive and quickly look for that. So here in my drive, I'm going to scroll down and see ProQuest Culture Grams. If I open up that folder, I can see this Google Doc has been created called Arab Republic of Egypt. Again, any content that is in that general overview middle section, like we talked about the flag or that table with that data on it, is going to be here, as well as any of those clickable links from the left hand side so when we looked at that history page it took all of that content from history and put it here in this google doc if you scroll through you'll see that there are 17 pages of the google doc so a lot of content here it might be worth your while to weed out specific information that you want to share with your students rather than this large 17 page document. So another link on the right hand side of the screen is this add to Google Classroom link. You'll notice that my Google Classroom is opening up and the first option I need to make is what class I want to create something for. So I selected my class and then I have some actions like create an assignment, ask a question, make an announcement, or create a material. But what I really need you to understand here is you are simply adding a link, a shortcut to this part of Culturegrams as one of these options. So if I click create assignment and I click go, all Culturegrams did for me was to add the link automatically. You'll notice that even though this is an assignment, because I'm going directly from Culturegrams to create this Google Classroom assignment, I don't have my typical options like adding a Google Drive link, adding a file from my computer. That has no longer appeared here because Culturegrams is thinking, oh, they only want this assignment to be linking the students to Culturegrams. Now that may be the case. So I'm going to give this assignment a name and I can click assign. Here in one of my students' Google Classroom, if they would click on the Classwork tab, they'll see that assignment called Egypt. And when they view the assignment, all they're going to have is that link that when they click on it will open up Culturegrams. It will bring them to that specific area of research for Egypt, 
but remember your student might need to open up the culturegrams app via classlink first and then click on this link from google classroom continuing down the right hand side of the screen next you'll see kids version of egypt obviously if you click this link it's going to bring you to the kids version of this content not the world edition where we are currently looking next you'll have a section called get report here this is pretty self-explanatory you have some options to print view or email underneath more features these are key aspects of the world edition photo gallery videos slideshows interviews famous people and recipes if you click on any of these links it's going to bring the students to a separate view of recipes specific to Egypt. But what you'll notice is, for example, this recipes section, this is also an option at the top of your culture gram. So here you'll see recipes, meaning if you didn't want to start navigating where we chose a country, continent, or region, You could just start here at the top, click on recipes, and then knowing that you wanted to look at recipes specifically for Egypt, click on the alphabetical area and then Egypt. So two different ways to bring you to that content. Again, you can either look here on the top or over here on the right-hand side of the page, this more features section. Next, we have tools. Again, self-explanatory. If you click on any of these, they are links that will bring you to additional information. And then finally, let's talk about these teaching resources. I'm going to be honest with you, these teaching activities as well as curriculum standards are very basic. When you click on the link for teaching activities, it opens up a PDF document. This PDF document is 142 pages long and contains all of Culturegram's teaching activities. There's no real way to narrow down the results besides looking at this index. When it comes to the teaching activities, in my opinion, they're just a very basic lesson plan outline. There are some clickable links that you see here in blue that when you click on the link, it will bring you to that specific part of culture grams. So take the teaching resources for what they're worth. If you find value in them, great. If not, you may need to look for other sources for teaching ideas. So that wraps up the world edition section of culture to grams. Next, we're going to move to the kids edition. The Kids Edition is very similar as far as the main navigation goes. At the top, you have these specific areas that you could navigate to right away. So my example before was recipes. If I knew I was interested in recipes, I could click here and be brought to that section. I could also use the clickable map or these links to navigate to a certain area of the world. So I will do my same example. I'll start in Africa then click on Egypt. And here you'll notice that the main page for Egypt in the kids edition looks a little bit different, but generally it's the same. The kids edition is definitely a little more user friendly. In my opinion, it's not as overwhelming. That's why I would suggest using this with upper elementary and maybe even into middle school. Starting on the left-hand side, you'll notice that some of the categories are the same as they were in the world, but some of them have been narrowed down a little bit deeper. So let's take my history example for before. On the world edition, there was just one clickable link called history. Here in the kids edition, you'll see history is a category. And then underneath that, again, it's narrowed down a little bit deeper to a timeline, pharaohs and their pyramids and so on so let me click on one of these links it will bring me to a new page of the kids edition 
So rather than that world edition where it was really text heavy and there was a whole scrolling page of history, the kids edition breaks that history down. It's a little bit less overwhelming. Here the kids can scroll and they can look specifically at the timeline for Egypt. It's laid out really nicely. Again, I think very user friendly. Using the links on the side, the students can click and be brought to additional information. Something that I do wanna point out that's unique to the kids edition is this life as a kid. This would be a really interesting perspective for the kids to take on as part of their research. research. They have the translate option because again, this is a little bit more text heavy, as well as the option to listen to this passage. To return to the main page of Egypt, we're going to click here. And now looking at the middle section, you have a lot of facts in the did you know section. You're still going to have that infographic that I talked about before, a flag, some quick facts, the ability to listen to audio as well as see a visual like a map. But you'll notice that data or that table is not here on the kids edition. Looking at the right-hand side of the screen, you still have the option to save to Google Drive as well as add to Google Classroom. So take advantage of those features. This link is going to obviously link you back to the World Edition. So maybe there was some content in the World Edition that you're not seeing here in the Kids Edition. You could click on this link and easily go back and forth between the two versions. It's a nice shortcut. Get options are straightforward, printing, viewing, and emailing. More features, again, whatever you see here on the right-hand side of more features, that mimics the top where you have this tab of navigation. Tools, again, you have the graphs and tables, the world time, a distance calculator, and a currency converter. Those could be some interesting tools for your students to explore. And then wrapping up with the teaching resources. These are different than the World Edition, but the layout is the same. Remember I told you that the teaching activities are very basic in my opinion. This time the PDF only has 73 pages, but again, a little bit difficult to navigate and very basic as far as what they are showing you for a lesson plan. Let's go back to our main screen of culture grams, and this time we're going to talk about the states edition. So here I'll click on the explore button. You'll notice that at the top, there's less options than the world edition or the kids edition had. Here you'll only see tabs for the flag gallery, recipes, as well as graphs and tables. So two choices for navigating. You could start at the top using these tabs. If you specifically wanted to look up a flag for one of the states, you could click here on the flag gallery, or you could start by looking at that general overview of a state. So let's use the map option to select Wisconsin. You'll notice that the options here on the left-hand side of the screen as well as the right hand side of the screen have changed quite a bit. Starting on the left hand side of the screen, you'll see some different categories here, but again, anything underneath is a clickable link. That's going to bring you to a specific page based on the content for Wisconsin in this case. So here I could click on the timeline, look at the timeline of Wisconsin, I have the option to translate as well as to listen to the audio version of this. If I return to the Wisconsin homepage, I could scroll and see additional information over here on the left hand side. But notice that kids view or life as a kid is not here in the state's edition. In the center of the screen are your main facts for Wisconsin, a did you know section, the flag, some additional information, and a map. Very basic, 
Some of these have clickable links, but again, it's just a general overview and visuals. On the right hand side, the only option you have as a teacher is to save this to Google Drive or add this to Google Classroom. There are some report options, however, it's a drop down this time. Very basic to either print, view, or email this report. Going back to the main page of Culturegrams, the last category is this provinces edition. I am not going to demonstrate the provinces edition because it's straightforward. Instead of the states for the United States, here you'll see the provinces of Canada. You have the map or you have the clickable links to focus on a specific area for research. This portion of the training is going to cover the Britannica School app. If this app is not found on your ClassLink page or if your students do not see it on their ClassLink page, you may have to go up to the top toolbar, click this plus button to add it to your ClassLink page from your app library. Once you have the Britannica School app on your ClassLink page, you'll click on it to open it up. And it's going to prompt you here to fill in an access ID and a passcode. Because you're entering through ClassLink, there is no need to fill out those boxes. You and your students will simply click on the skip button and you'll be brought directly to the Britannica School app. Before you begin as a teacher, before you begin searching through the different resources, you'll want to take a second to go up here and sign into My Britannica. When you sign into the application, it's going to allow you to gather content and put that into some folders. It's also going to allow you to browse lesson plans that other teachers have created and even allows you to create your own lesson plans within the application as well. So you'll click sign in to My Britannica. Again, no need to fill out these boxes. You'll just click on the sign in with Google box. Choose the account that you would like to sign in with. This is going to pop back up, but as you'll see here, it does disappear right away. You'll know that you'll, you're signed in when you can see here my Britannica, and then there's links to my content and lesson plan browsing, which we'll talk about here shortly. For those of you who teach ESL or ELL students, um, you can click this arrow right here in the top toolbar, and this, this will launch a um, Britannica window that's in Spanish with Spanish resources as well. So you'll see on this main page here that we have three different levels um, of content that you can search from, element, elementary, middle, and high, super simple. Next to each of these, we do have a drop-down menu with some kind of prompts that can prompt students to look for specific things for each level, or there is this search bar. If you are um, already have plans and you know exactly what it is you're looking for and you're ready to get started with your research, Go ahead and just start in that search bar. Type what it is you're looking for. I'm going to type in the word tiger. Before I hit enter or before I click on this little search feature, I am going to get this window that kind of pops up with some options. If I'm looking for an article, I can go ahead and see just a couple of the top recommended articles right away. I can see some different images. As you can see here, it's not really certain what kind of tiger I'm looking for. Am I looking for the cat tiger or am I looking for tiger woods? So that is something just to kind of keep in the back of your mind if you're helping students search. It's also going to give me a few, not all, just a few of the videos that are related to tiger. Again, here I have the cat that's tiger, but I also have some kind of a tiger frog over here. If you're not really sure what you want or you wanna see what all options are available, you do not have to click here. You, you can just go ahead and click on this search feature. And it's going to bring you now directly into the page with all of that information relating to tigers. I do want you to kind of be aware I did search in the elementary box. So this is bringing me into the elementary view of um, Britannica School, which is a little bit different than um, the middle and the high school view. So you're going to see in the center here, I do have some top articles right away that are related to different tigers or different kinds of tigers. 
I have some images that I can click on. If you're looking over here on the left side, I can search videos. There's some dictionary information, magazines, lesson plans, and then a Lexile filtering option. If you want to look at the different articles, you can see the list here, but if you're looking for specific articles that are within that certain Lexile range, you can go ahead and change this filtering by sliding these bars to make it a little bit more precise for what you're searching for. Once I turned this feature on, you can see now next to my different articles, I now have a Lexile number next to each of them. So if that makes it a little bit easier to identify for you or your students, um, feel free to go ahead and use that feature right away if you're looking for an article at a specific Lexile range. Another way to kind of look at ranges is these different reading levels that are on the top. Now, this is the elementary view. This is not elementary level one, elementary level two, elementary level three. If I click the level two, I'm gonna get a list similar to level one, but this is at a higher reading level, and this is actually a middle school list. If I click level three, it's now bringing me into what they consider a high school list. From this page, if I were to try to open up a level three article or a level two article, I will receive this prompt that's saying it's going to take me into an advanced level. If that's okay with you and you'd like to check it out, click okay. If you wanna stay at that elementary level, you would just click cancel, go back to level one here. So if I'm searching for those elementary articles, I wanna check out this one on tigers, the first one listed. I am now going to have the same view that your students would have in a very kind of neat and organized fashion. On the left side, I may have a diagram or some kind of picture below it. I have this sliding bar with videos, and if I click the arrow, I'll have additional pictures and videos that relating to Tiger. And I also have this other orange bar that will bring me to, if I click on it, additional information relating to Tiger. I'm gonna go back to my article. These are broken down into these nice kind of neat and clean sections for students at that younger age to easily navigate and read. Again, we have some different reading levels here. I just clicked on reading level two and now you can see that it's brought me into this middle school level. I'm gonna go back to my elementary school level where I wanna be and you can see the text here in the center, but we also have these play features in each of the different sections. If the students are having issues with reading it or don't know a certain word, they can click this play button and it will read it, the whole passage to them in somewhat of a kind of computerized voice. Male tiger. Looking over here at the options here now on our right side, um, in this box, we can go ahead and we can click this article as a favorite if it's something that I know I wanna go back to later. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click this star, and now I have this box that's prompting up. And what you are gonna be prompted to do is put this article into what they call a resource pack or what I kind of refer to as a folder, because it's just a, a folder to house all these different resources. If you have some resources that you've already made, you can click here. You can see that I have a few sample ones. I can click the one that I want it into. If I wanna make a new folder or a new resource pack, I would simply go down here and create a new resource pack and then hit create. For now, I'm just gonna leave it starred and it's just kinda, gonna kinda throw it into my resources, not specifically in a pack yet. I'll talk about those shortly. You can also print it. You can also email this to yourself. You can create a citation. The plus and minus buttons make the font a little bit bigger or smaller. This is an awesome feature for those students on Chromebooks, which are really tiny. They can easily hit this plus button and make it a lot easier to read by making that font bigger. You can also um, translate these articles into a different language. 
So when I click on this little world here, I can choose from a whole slew of different languages. When you change it into a different language, you lose the ability to have it play. So unfortunately it does, when it reads and it plays, it only plays it in the English language. If you are playing around with this view and you get stuck with it into a different language, this bar up on the top right here, there's this little X, that's going to allow you to get out of that view and back into the English view. Below this section right here, you can see we do have the option to put this article on Google Classroom. So this is kind of imperative, especially for you that teach elementary and those really young students. Um, rather than having them open up the app themselves and try to find the specific article, go ahead, create a link to Google Classroom. So to do that, you'll click on Google Classroom. What it's gonna have you do is choose the classroom that you wanna put it into. I'm gonna put mine into this sample biology class. And then you'll have an option for what kind of an action to have. So you can create an assignment, announcement material, just like you do in Google Classroom otherwise. I'm just gonna create a material, hit go, give it a name, and then post it in my classroom. It's posted if you wanna go and view, make sure it's there. You can go ahead and click on this view option. It'll bring you into the class that you just put it into. Go ahead, check out that classwork tab and you'll see here now what I just made called Tigers. It's there for a link for my students to click on. When they click on it, it's gonna bring them directly to this page. Now, there's a caveat to this. In order for students to be logged into this article through Google Classroom, they must first go to Google, or I'm sorry, go to ClassLink, click on the, the Britannica app, open it up. They can open it up and close it right away. They can leave it open. It doesn't matter. Just they have to log into it at one point before they can click on it in your classroom. So that is something to keep in mind if your students are struggling and it's not bringing them there or if it's asking them for login information it's because they did not go through ClassLink first. So it just happens to be ha happens to have to be opened up prior to them clicking on this. I hope that makes sense. So now it's in my Google Classroom. If it's not something that you wanna put in Google Classroom, you can also just save it to your Google Drive for later use. When I click on Google Drive, again, you're gonna click the account you wanna save it to. I'll get a pop-up down here saying that it's saved. There it is, it's been successfully saved to Google Drive. So now when I go to my Google Drive, if I go to recent, um, you'll see it here. In your recents, it'll also be whatever I called it in the regular My Drive. But the cool thing about Britannica is it makes a folder here in your Google Drive for you. So when you open up this folder, Anytime you save anything from Britannica to your Google Drive, it is going to go ahead and automatically put those files here in your Google Drive folder. I do want to take a moment and... Um, show kind of what these views look like in the middle and the high school level for my middle and high school teachers. So I'm gonna go back to Britannica School. I'm gonna choose this drop down menu for middle, type in Tiger again. You're gonna see kind of a layout that's pretty similar to elementary school um, with our images and videos on the side. There is Lexile filtering still here for the middle school. And again, these level one, two, and three options are on the top. Level one will bring students back down to elementary school levels. Level three will bring them back up to high school levels. Once you identify the article that you're looking for, again, I'm gonna click on this one. It's kind of similar to what the elementary one had. It's a little bit of a different layout, some bigger words, more details. So again, definitely an article that is more towards the middle school level. 
On the right side, we do not have all those features that we that we had in the elementary level, but they are up here kind of in this little toolbar on the top. So again, the features are still there. They just look a little bit different. So we do have the option to save this as a favorite, print it, cite it, translate it. Um, it still will read it and then make it um, bigger or smaller with the font. If you want to send it to your Google Drive or save it, you do have to click the send to arrow and then you'll see those additional options popping up under that arrow as well. Quickly for my high school teachers, I'll just give you your view. Again, a little bit more similar to that middle school level, but now even lengthier and more detailed text on Tigers for the high school students. That was the route that you would take if you knew what you were searching for, but there may be times where you might wanna explore something or students might wanna explore several different contents in a certain category. If that's the case, you do not have to click these drop down arrows. You can simply just click on the, the grade band. So I'm just gonna click on elementary. This page kind of has these, these hooks on the top that might get the kids a little bit intrigued about a certain content. These change from time to time. More importantly, the bottom, I'm going to click show more here, has some different categories now that students can work with or kind of explore or even you as a teacher can explore. So we have articles as one. I'm just going to open that up. You'll see different articles. I'll click on animals here. There's different categories of animals or if you just want to look at all the animals, they'll all be listed here on the right in ABC order. If you want to see more, there are some scrolling options here on the bottom to make that list a little bit more um, lengthy. I'm going to go back home. The same thing is very similar to media. Again, you can look at different, different categories. And they'll be all over here to the right for you or your students just to kind of go browsing through. I'm not going to open up all of these for you. Um, there are a couple I just do want to bring it to, a, to your attention quickly. Um, one of them is World Atlas. The World Atlas is kind of cool. Um, it's pretty interactive. Students can click in a certain area. They can dial down into a certain region or a certain state. I'm going to go to Wisconsin. Once I'm here, you'll see that I have a summary, profile, and then some related content. This in this section is not necessarily um, filtered for elementary or middle school or high school content. This atlas is available in all of those levels. If you wanna get even a deeper view or a look at that certain area, you can grab this little peg man here on the bottom and we can drop them down and take a look at more of a, a street view of what the students would see if you were actually in that area or that town. So that's kind of a cool, a cool feature that Britannica School has. There's some Animal Kingdom, some stuff about biographies that they can search for. Let me show more again. They can tour the USA. That is very similar to this World Atlas but it's specifically more the United States. Oops. Um, they can do an explore and this compare countries is kind of a neat feature as well too, where you can take two different countries and then get some Pretty unique and useful information, some statistics here, and then there's also some articles in media on each of these countries as well. I'm going to go back again here and show one more thing. So I know if there's any um, kindergarten, first grade student or teachers watching this tutorial, you're thinking this is probably way too much, but they do have this cool, cute fundamental section here for pre K to second grade students. You can simply click on this. Um, teachers, 
Um, your, your students now have these different categories that they can search from. It's not nearly as in-depth. It's, it's a lot more limited, but still kind of a fun place for them to go explore. And go and explore different things. So the explore tool, for example, will allow them to explore different um, biomes of the world. They can get a video that they can watch. They can click on different areas and see people, animals, um, different content like that. Uh, there's some books to read. There are some games to play. And then there's this cute create feature that will allow them to draw a picture or write something or make something up um, that may be indicative of what they learned. Or they can just kind of have fun with that feature as well. I'm going to take a moment and step out of this elementary section, go back to my own page, and I'm going to take a, le a peek at the middle school and high school section. So again, a lot of the same types of categories are here on the same page for my middle and high school students. They are just obviously in a more um, kind of grown up layout, if you will. So a little bit more um, with words, maybe some more diagrams, definitely a lot more in depth about what these students are going to see when they are just going and kind of playing around and searching different things. Again, I mentioned that World Atlas is available on all three levels, biographies are as well. Um, so are the comparing and contrasting countries. So again, a fun place for them to go and explore. I'll show you the middle, I'm sorry, the high school view real quick. So again, all them same categories there. They still do have that hook on the top to kind of get students maybe interested in something with these different categories. All um, are options for you for searching, exploring, and for your students. I did in the beginning when I talked about why you want to sign into Britannica and I talked about um, allowing you to gather certain content and I did speak a little bit about lesson plans. So I do want to just kind of end here by looking at those last couple things that I mentioned in the beginning of the tutorial. The first thing I want to show is my content. You can access this on the top from the middle elementary or high school sections. I'm gonna click on my content and you're gonna see it's gonna bring you to something called favorites and resource packs. Anytime I click that star next to an article or any kind of resource, it brought it to my favorites page here. So when I was when I was looking at the tiger, it brought me to this favorites page. Next to each of my articles or my information here, you're going to see this little purple box. This one says three. The ones up here say one. These are my elementary resources. This here is a high school resource because it's level three. On the left side, we have what I refer to as folders. They call, again, these resource packs. So I made some um, sample ones here by just creating a new resource pack. I kind of view them again as folders where I can just take my information from my favorites and store it in over here. So if I have my sample resources, I have just a couple things in there. I have a, one called a water cycle with maps and globes in it. Um, I have a test one with nothing in it currently. But if I want to see all my favorites, I would click on all favorites. I would take my favorite that I have here from the center and I'm going to drag it to this resource pack folder. So now you'll see that I have one item and this is a fun and easy way to keep all of your information a lot more organized. The most awesome thing I think about these resource packs is they are shareable. So if you create a resource pack all about tigers or endangered species or the water cycle or whatever you're studying or your students are studying, you can go ahead and share this resource pack out with your colleagues. So if you as a fourth grade unit or maybe a middle school science um, unit are studying specific things, you would go ahead and click share pack. It's going to give you this link right here. You can send that off to your teacher friends. All they have to do is log into Britannica first, click the link, and it's going to give them all of that nice um, information that you put together into that resource pack. You can also delete it, rename it, or email it. My lessons plan tab right now, um, 
This one's empty because I have not created any lesson plans, but you do have the option to search for lesson plans as well. So if you want a lesson plan browse, you can always go up to the top there where it says lesson plan browse. It's going to default where everything is checked. So you have resources on everything. I'm going to uncheck these. I'm going to click just a certain grade band. I'm going to uncheck these and I am a previous science teacher. So I'm going to click science and now I'm going to refresh this page. From here now you can see all different kinds of lesson plans that were created by fellow teachers on all these different topics. You can see when they were created, what grades they were for, how long it takes, who created them. When you click on these, you are going to see then in turn the whole resource pack that they have associated with it and then any directions that they may have put into it. Again, you can send these to yourself, you can save them in your Google Drive, you can share them, you can print them. You also have this ability, cool ability, to customize it. If you customize it, it's going to break that whole lesson plan down into these different topic areas, and it's going to allow you to give it its own title, you can add your own directions, you can add additional resources, take resources out, um, add your own assessment, and you can completely customize it to fit the needs of you and your classroom. So again, that's kind of a, um, a great tool that Britannica School has to offer. Now I've showed you all of this resource here in the teacher view. I do want you to know that the, the student view is exactly the same um, with the exception of obviously the lesson plan and the my content. But this view will be the same. All of the different grade bands here, when they're searching, it's going to be the same as what you as a teacher would also see. The final piece of today's professional learning will cover integration ideas. Now, we talked about the two apps, Culturegrams and Britannica, with the focus of research in mind. And we just want to remind you that these two apps are very powerful, but they can also be very overwhelming to your students. And by that, I mean, I would not send my students to any of these apps to be used as free time. Instead, what you want to do is create a purposeful activity for your students to complete along with the app for research. Catherine and I have created two sample integration ideas that you could use with either of the apps. The first idea is to use this travel brochure. I created this very basic travel brochure here in Google Slides. To complete this travel brochure, students would click on the text boxes that I added that say type here. They're going to type in that information as well as add some images to create this brochure. So here I am in my Google Classroom. I'm going to click on the Classwork tab. I'll click on the Create button and then choose Create Assignment. I want my students to create a travel brochure specifically for Egypt. So my title is going to be Travel Brochure Egypt. And next, I'm going to click on this Add button. So the first thing I need to do is click on Google Drive, and I need to find that travel brochure that I made in Google Slides. So I'll find the file, select it, and then click on the blue Insert button. It's important to change this option here from Students Can View File to make a copy for each student because I want each student to make their own travel brochure for Egypt. Next, I need to send them the link to the kids edition of Culturegrams focusing on Egypt. So I'm just going to simply open up Culturegrams, make sure that I am on the home page for, in this case, Egypt. And rather than clicking on this Add to Google Classroom button, I'm just going to simply click here in the Omnibox, select the hyperlink, copy it, and then come back here to my Google Classroom. 
click add link and then paste that link in. Then when I click add link, as part of this assignment, my students will have the piece that they need to fill in themselves, this travel brochure, as well as the link for the research. Now I can click assign. Now let's take a look at this from the student perspective. Here I am as a student in Google Classroom. I'll click on the Classwork tab. See this assignment called Travel Brochure Egypt. Click on View Assignment and you'll see the two pieces as part of this assignment. On the left hand side is the link that the students will click to view the content on Egypt. On the right hand side, this student received a copy of the Google Slides template that is a travel brochure. You can see here the student's name as part of the title. To complete this activity, the student will open up the travel brochure, go back to their Google Classroom, click on the Culturegram link. The page with the content for Egypt will open. And then the student can simply click back and forth between tabs from culturegrams to that Google slide activity where they can fill out the information. This last integration idea uses a template that students will summarize an article with. It's called Five Things You Didn't Know. There are five different text boxes that the students can click and type in an interesting fact that they learned. In the middle here, they could add an image that relates to the topic. And down here in this word art, they can actually change it to the specific topic. They can get creative with this, adding color, images, like I said, changing the font. But now we're going to talk about how you would use this as a Google Classroom assignment. So here in Google Classroom, I'm going to click on the Create button and select Assignment. My title is going to be summarizing and in the instructions, they're going to read the article about turkeys and complete the graphic organizer. So I need to attach these two files for my students, the article as well as the graphic organizer. I'll click on the add button and choose Google Drive. Here, I'm going to find that Google Slides activity called Five Things You Didn't Know. Select the file and click the blue Insert button. Now, I want each of my students to have their own version of this template. So I need to change Students Can View File to make a copy for each student. Next, I'm going to go to Britannica in this case. Here, I found an article about the turkey. And what's really nice about this article is there are five paragraphs. So that means I'm going to instruct my students to write one fact or one thing they didn't know for each paragraph. That's another way that I'm going to give them instructions to support them by using this resource. So up here at the top in my Omnibox, I'm going to select the link and copy it. I'll go back to my Google Classroom, click on the Add button, select link, and then paste that link. Once I click add link, I'll notice that I have a slide for each of my students as well as the link for them to research. Now I can click assign. Here is the student view of Google Classroom. To view this assignment, they need to click on the Classwork tab, click on the assignment called Summarizing, and select View Assignment. On the left-hand side is the link that will bring them to the Turkey article found on Britannica. On the right-hand side is the Five Things You Didn't Know template that each student has a copy of. In this case, the student's name is before the file name. So they're going to click on that Google Slides activity to open it up. Here is their copy to fill in. They're gonna go back to their Google Classroom, 
click on the link for Britannica. Here's that article all about turkeys. They'll be able to read the article and then switch back to the template, click and fill in the information. If you have any questions or comments, concerns, anything comes up as you're, you're utilizing this tool and working with your students, um, definitely feel free to reach out to any of the tech integrators and they will be more than happy to assist you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you again for joining us today. Thank you.